Welcome to our new students, um, our partners from the financial sector, from the universities. And uh, we have two special guests today. The first one has arrived, uh, Norina Hurt. Uh, Minister Bosch will come later because he had And for this year, uh, we are doubling the numbers, going from 25 to 50 uh, master students. We are going to develop one new topic, that's finance and sustainability. And we are extremely proud to have Norina Hurt, the speaker after me, as the first uh, person going to, uh, to, to do the chair. So she will become the new chair on globalization, sustainability and finance. Thank you, Dirk, for that introduction. The way we thought about the world was profoundly flawed. Let me give you just four manifestations of this that have particularly struck me over the past year. The first is dogma triumphing over reality. The second, models triumphing over reason. The third, the dominance of a culture of conformity. And fourth, the reverence in which experts were heard. It's really quite absurd when we think back as to how much trust was put in the hands of those who were considered experts. But it was, from rating agencies to economists, from Alan Greenspan to Bernie Madoff, those deemed experts' proclamations were taken at face value, and on the rare occasion that they were even challenged, the very few who did dare to do so were ignored, or in some cases, even fired. We need to train ourselves to be much more critical about our own and others' thoughts and dictates. How objective are the facts, facts, supposed facts in front of me? We should be asking ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Walter Boss. Like Alice in Wonderland, we had to keep running to remain in the same place and to believe six impossible things before breakfast, all while the Red Queen kept shouting, off with his head. And the central message in our vision on the financial sector is that the sector must once again focus on providing businesses and private individuals with reliable financial services based on acceptable and transparent risks. Now, whatever we're going to do, and at whatever level, and together with whom, whatever we do, we need to do it quickly. And I'd like to issue a warning today. I will always, and I repeat, I will always defend bankers and banks as important and indispensable to any economy, and certainly to an economy that needs to work its way out of a recession. Looking at the financial crisis, as Marina in a way also does, as, as a moral crisis, also makes, you, also, also makes you understand how difficult it actually is to deal with it and, and to solve the problems that have come up with it. You know, steering the discussion quickly towards a bit more regulation here and a bit more supervision there, in a lot of ways, is, is the easy way out. You hold the key. You can do it. You are future leaders in finance. Show us. Thank you very much. Um, what I would like also is a quote, uh, as that models are to be used and not to be believed. Uh, this is a quote from Jacob Marshak from the um, famous Cowles Foundation in 1952. Uh, so that if we have the intellectual debate, which I hope the students will have, that we usually do that truly with models. Um. I mean, ab absolutely, it would be like throwing the baby out with the bathwater if we were to take from this that we should junk models. That wasn't at all the point intended. The point was, as you yourself say, to make sure that models do reflect reality and when they don't, work on the model. Uh, I have a question for the both of you. You talked about this is the time to change. Now we have to change. Now we have to make an attitude change. How are we going to do that? How are you going to manage that? Because we see a flight back to the old times, to the old 
attitude. So how are you trying and willing to try to change this in the coming years? That's my question for you both. Um, well, history actually teaches us that it's not the wise elders who effect change, it's the young. So part of that question really has to be directed back at you because par the wise elders who benefit from the existing system whose interest it is in not having change, in not changing the way we think about things, in clinging on to Reaganomics, in retaining their old attitudes, they're not the ones who are going to create the paradigm shifts that are needed and historically never have been. It's, your, it's you, it's your generation. It's your generation who will make the lasting changes that we need.